Breathing in snowflakes Burnt lungs Hello YouTube and thanks for watching. Uh, this video is going to explain how the filtration system works in the Boyu TL450. So uh, give me a couple of seconds and I'll take the lid off and uh, we'll go through each chamber at the back and what it does and why it's important for your marine system. Um, so give me two seconds and we'll start going through the chambers. So we've got the lid off now and these are the four chambers at the back um, and this is your filtration system in this particular type of aquarium. So we'll start with the first chamber which is chamber one which is where the water first will enter your filtration system. Uh, we'll start with the slats at the front, it's very important that those are kept open so you can allow maximum water to flow around your aquarium and maximum water to go into your filtration system. With regards to the bottom one, um, it's not overly important if that one is closed. Um, I've kept mine open so I can have more flow into my filter system. Um, but if you do keep it open you need to make sure it's clear of any sand or any rock. Because if, the, if you've got it open and the sand is um, covering it, all you'll find is that the sand will be dragged through into your filter system and potentially could cause problems. So keep it open if you can and scoop everything away like I've done there. Um, or if you are going to keep it closed it's not a problem. Um, close it but just ensure that the rest are fully open. So as the water passes through those grills it will go into your filter pads which are these here, the black thing underneath there and there's two of those that sit on top of each other and they both sit on top of a UV steriliser and the UV steriliser is right in the bottom of this chamber. So your water passes through the grills into the filter pads and the filter pads will catch and remove any um, particles that are flowing in your water um, and they will stay in your filter pad and eventually they'll get broken down by uh, friendly bacteria that will start to build up in those pads and as the water goes through there it then gets dragged down to the bottom and it enters your UV steriliser which is a high intensity light bulb and what the UV steriliser does it kills um, any uh, waterborne algae or any waterborne bacteria in your water um, that's obviously going to be harmful and the UV steriliser will uh, kill those as it passes through the UV light. Um, a couple of tips what I've done in this chamber is um, I've put some fine filter wool in between these two filter pads uh, and what the fine filter wool will do is it will catch any smaller particles that have been um, allowed to pass through this filter pad and the fine filter will also just uh, gives you water um, it just makes it that little bit cleaner and that little bit clearer. I've not gone mad with it I've only put a couple of layers uh, and you can pick up some fine fill tool from any fish shop for about a pound, something like that. Um, this tube here you can see, this is linked directly to the um, protein skimmer, which is in the next chamber that we'll talk about in a second. And this basically needs to remain out of your tank, because the idea is that it draws water in from outside your aquarium in order for your protein skimmer to work. So quickly then, the water will go through the slats into the filter pads, which will clear any debris from your water and it gets um, stuck down to the bottom and goes through UV steriliser um, and then it gets pumped um, next door into the protein skimmer. Just quickly on the UV steriliser, there's two ways to make sure it works. The first and easiest one is that light on your power pack should be red, which means it's on and working. Or the second tip to see if your um, UV steriliser is working is on a night time when your aquarium is in um, darkness you should be able to see a very faint blue light coming from um, down deep in that chamber. You'll, you'll have to look left to right and look through those slats but eventually you should see um, a faint blue glow and that's the glow that's produced from your high intensity light within the UV steriliser. So that's the second way you can tell if it's working properly. So that's chamber one, um, so we'll now talk about chamber two which is the uh, protein skimmer is the protein skimmer. Now the protein skimmer is a very important uh, tool to maintain a healthy marine aquarium. Now basically the role of the protein skimmer is to remove waste products from your aquarium. Um, now what I mean by waste products is uh, uneaten fish food, um, waste that comes from your fish and from any livestock you've got in your aquarium, anything that's died or decayed, any bits of coral or anything that was living on your rock that's died and basically this uh, protein skimmer will separate that and take it out of your water. Now the reason why that's important is because if that waste product wasn't taken out of your water 
it would break down um, and eventually form into ammonias and into nitrates which is harmful for your aquarium and for anything you've got living in it. Now this cup here is the protein cup, uh, the skimmer cup and what this does is, uh, this is where it collects all the waste products from your aquarium. Now the way it works is, um, as air is drawn in through this tube here, um, it uh, is met by a, the skimmer at the bottom that wicks all the bubbles up that you can see forming there. Now as these bubbles are formed they will capture the small particles of waste product in your aquarium and as the bubbles rise to the surface of your protein skimmer those bubbles burst and as they burst they burst into this cup. Now as you can see the brown stains and the, the, the brown sort of water in there that's uh, where the bubbles have burst and collected into the cup. So all this brown stuff is basically the waste product that's been um, skimmed out of my aquarium. So it proves that there's quite a lot in there and that the protein skimmer is working quite well. Uh, with regards to maintenance of your protein skimmer, all you need to do is keep an eye on it um, every week, every couple of weeks, just to basically empty the contents down the, uh, down the drain or down the sink. And you want to give it just a good clean. Don't use soap or anything like that, just hot water, clean off all that residue and just pop it back into um, your aquarium. Now, to get a, your protein skimmer working effectively, you want to try and um, maintain that sort of level of air going into your skimmer. So the bubbles are sort of going halfway to three quarters up that inner tube um, for it to work at its best. Now what you'll find is it's very temperamental as a skimmer and you'll have to uh, do some adjusting, especially throughout the first couple of months of you setting your aquarium up. But eventually, um, by adjusting this um, top inlet tube of the air, you'll eventually get uh, a good balance of um, how it works well with your aquarium. <coughs> um, just firstly, uh, with regards to that before we move on to the next one, when you first set this aquarium up, you don't need to run your protein skimmer. You can um, tighten this fully closed so no air is getting into it because for the first couple of weeks until you, until you start introducing livestock, um, there'll be nothing to skim from your water. And all the protein skimmer will do is, is pump thousands and thousands of bubbles into your aquarium. It's not a harmful thing, it won't do anything to your water or anything like that. But in case you're wondering when you first set up your aquarium why you've got loads of bubbles being pumped into your water, it's simply because the skimmer's got nothing to skim out. Uh, so all it can do is send the bubbles straight through into your aquarium. So that's your protein skimmer. We'll now go to chamber three, which is your bio balls and your ceramic rings. Right, I hope you're still awake. Um, we're nearly done now. So this is chamber three, this is where your bio balls are, which is what all these are here. And you've also got two bags of ceramic uh, rings that are beneath your bio balls. Now from the protein skimmer, the water enters um, chamber three near the top. I don't think you can quite make out there, but there's just, just a hole there, which is where um, the water comes through from the protein skimmer into chamber three. So the first thing it does is go through these bio balls, and the idea of these bio balls is basically the water will pass through and uh, these balls will trap any debris or any loose food or waste that's managed to escape these two uh, chambers. And the reason why it's important to try and catch them is because if they're not caught, they will um, eventually break down into ammonia and to nitrates. So the water passes through these. These hopefully catch any loose parts of debris. And then the water will pass through um, the ceramic rings, and you've got two bags of those. Um, now the ceramic rings are a natural filter for the water and they are basically an artificial live rock and what a lot of people do is they will take the ceramic rings out and put chunks of live rock in there because it does the same thing um, but I prefer not to because you've got live rock in your aquarium so in effect really getting um, double the process because you've got the artificial live rock and the natural live rock to ensure your water is uh, cleaned effectively so like I say the ceramic rings are a natural filter for the water but it's also a place where friendly bacteria will begin to build up and store, such as your live rock. Um, so as the water passes through it, the friendly bacteria will break down your ammonia and your nitrates in your aquarium to keep your water at a safe level. So once it's gone through the bio balls, uh, again through the ceramic tiles, ceramic rings, which is a further cleaning process, a natural filter, removes any um, lasting parts of ammonia or nitrates. And then uh, once it's gone through there, um, the water again goes to the bottom of chamber 3 and enters the bottom of chamber 4 which is your heater and your pump. So finally chamber 4 is your heater and your pump. Uh, your heater should be set around about 26 degrees um, centigrade 
Um, your, your aquarium should maintain that sort of temperature or if you're working Fahrenheit I think that's between 75 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, so the heat is self-explanatory, it basically keeps the water temperature um, at the correct uh, heat. Uh, a good tip is to get a thermometer stuck at the side of your tank, you can pick these up for um, about a pound, two pounds, something like that and it just uh, gives you an accurate reading of uh, the temperature in the aquarium uh, which is quite important because um, if your room temperature fluctuates like it's getting quite cold now so I've noticed mine is chopping down from 26 to 25 so it means then you can just turn it up slightly to accommodate uh, the room temperature or uh, same goes if the room temperature is really warm uh, you might need to turn your heater down a little bit because obviously whatever temperature in your room is uh, that can have an effect on your water in your aquarium. So by having one of those thermometers it just uh, enables you to keep track of the temperature in your room. So that's your heater uh, and then it goes into the pump and your water is pumped back out back into your aquarium by this outlet tube. Now these pumps work at around about 12,000 litres uh, per hour which means it will circulate and process your water in this aquarium which is 68 litres about 20 times an hour so in theory all this water should be going through your filtration system about 20 times an hour. You can change uh, the speed of the water comes out by using this uh, but I would recommend try it on as powerful as, as it will go uh, because water flow is essential in an aquarium um, and you've got the little uh, holes in this outlet tube if we can just see them um, I don't think we can see them there but it's about five holes on this outlet tube uh, that dictates where the water comes out and you can also twist this so you can have the water facing up to create a ripple on the surface or you can have it facing down into your aquarium. Um, I personally don't think this pump is sufficient enough to run a healthy system so I'm currently uh, awaiting an extra power head um, and I'll post a video about that um, when, I, when it arrives showing you uh, where to install it and why it's essential to get um, great flow into your aquarium. So just to recap then the water goes through chamber one the filter system and the UV steriliser into your protein skimmer to remove any waste products from your aquarium which collect in that cup then into your bio balls to trap any uh, last bit of debris and then through your natural filter of your ceramic rings where the friendly bacteria will also break down any nitrates or ammonia and into chamber four where it gets warm and then back into your aquarium. So I'll just uh, close the lid down, uh, mention a couple of more things and then that'll be right, it. Well I hope that's been informative and you might understand your tank a bit more. Um, next video will be in a couple of days when I receive my power head uh, and that's going to uh, create extra currents in my aquarium and better flow and I'll explain why that's important, I'll explain things like dead spots and uh, how to prevent those etc. Uh, then a couple of days after that I'll be doing a water change, um, I'll be changing 15% of my water and adding fresh salt water and at the same time I'll be giving my filter components a clean um, such as the uh, bio balls, ceramic rings and my filter pads um, so I'll show you how to do that and why you do that so I hope you've enjoyed it, um, if there's anything you want clarifying please write a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I can and um, that's it, uh, thank you